Hey guys, welcome to February Favorites. I just have to say, if I seem a little flustered in this video, it's because I just dropped half my can of Diet Coke in my lap. So I had to wipe it up real quick, take off my pajama pants and put on pants that I wanted to show you, but instead I'll just insert a picture. Um, so anyway, that luckily it didn't really get all my shirt or anything. It literally went right in my lap and then of course on the floor. So I had to use this towel and my pants to <laughs> soak it up, but the show must go on. So I'm going to start with the pants then that I wanted to talk to you about. These are by Under Armour. And I was looking for some sweatpant type of pants, but that were a little more fitted and looked good. So if like you wanted to be comfortable on the weekend or run out, um, you could without looking sloppy. And a lot of them that I try on just are real sloppy looking or like super skin tight. I don't know. I just had a really hard time finding what I was looking for. So I found these. And I can't remember where I found them, but I'll link them below because I tried on several pairs from several places. Um, but I really like these and I think they come in black too, but I really liked this gray color. They fit really nice at the waist. They have pockets. They're thin, so it's not like they're the warmest ever for this time of year. Um, but I plan to wear them, you know, more as the weather gets a little bit better. And they have a really nice cuff at the ankle, so they show the ankle. And I think that's really important in looking cute, like when you're out and about wearing tennis shoes, you know, or sneakers. I think showing the ankle is key. Whether you're wearing jeans, um, leggings, anything. I've mentioned that before. If you show the ankle, I just feel like it makes it more stylish for one, and I feel like it doesn't look as frumpy. And I'm still trying to work on the lighting. I felt like the lighting was good before, and ever since I turned off the autofocus on the camera so it wouldn't like try to focus in and out, I feel like the lighting is darker. So, I'm not sure. It's one of those things when you buy a new camera, you go through the frustrating stages of trying to make things work. I hope I don't end up having to move into my office even though I have great light in there. I just like sitting in here. It just feels more comfortable. So anyway, we're just going to go with it. I do have a light on top of the camera, but I wanted to talk about the simple cleansing water. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you saw I posted this. So you can see how much I've, I've used. I've been solely using this at night to remove my eye makeup. Um, and it's very, very similar to the Bioderma. So I know a lot of you, it's hard to get the Bioderma, even though you can order it from Beautylish, I believe now, which is great, but it is more expensive. So I was all about something from the drugstore if it worked just as well. So, so far I really like this, but I do plan on trying the Garnier version when I'm finished with this and see how that compares. And I know they also have a version um, for waterproof in that as well. But I like this um, to take my eye makeup off, like I said, because my eyes have gotten, you know, really sensitive over the past couple of years. And I find the makeup removers that I used to use like the Lancome or any kind of oil-based eye makeup remover can sometimes irritate my eyes. And I often wear liner on my inner rim. So I find this does not irritate it when I'm trying to remove that. And then I'll also use something like this maybe the next morning if I'm not going to wash my face. I've mentioned before, I kind of judge whether I feel like I actually need to wash my face again or if I need to just go over it with something like this and then it feel clean again the next morning because obviously I wash my face every night before I go to bed. So anyway, just wanted to mention that, that I really do like this. Next, something I've been using a ton, and if you guys always check out the description box uh, link below of what I'm wearing, I almost always link everything I'm wearing, so definitely check that out there. You will have noticed this, and this is the Hourglass Edit Palette, and I talked about this months ago when I first got it and it first came out, and basically telling you why I liked it, um, and why I got it because I think it's a great for one it's a great travel palette and I love that it had some colors in there that I hadn't purchased before and it was a great way for me to try out the bronzer um, and a few of these other things so I really love the bronzer I've been using that a lot lately I don't have it on today I used um, I think my Smashbox contour palette today but totally been loving like all of these. What I'll normally do, I don't use this blush as much because it's a little bright for me, but I'll try to tone it down maybe with another powder or I'll mix it with the mood exposure here. And then definitely looking forward to taking this on vacation because I always use the diffuse light um, as either a setting powder or under eyes and that way I can just have this one with me. So this is still available and I'll link it below. I know it was uh, I think it's sold out 
at Sephora. So something I've been doing off and on all month if I'm not trying out new foundations, which I'd mentioned in a recent video I've been on a foundation kick lately again. It kind of comes and goes with me. I'll find something I love and I'll just stick with that forever. Then all of a sudden I get the itch to try some new things. Well, something that I've been loving, um, and I mentioned this, you know, in several videos, probably some favorites here recently, is mixing the IT Cosmetic CC Cream with other foundations. What started this was mixing it with the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous. This is a great foundation on its own. And if you have trouble with foundation, um, not staying around all day, or maybe if you're oily, this is great. But also if you have dry skin, I have dry skin in the winter, and this has been great for me. This adds a tiny bit of extra moisture, and what I started adding this to it for was a little bit of color correction. This was slightly too light for me. But I'm telling you, any foundation that I've added a little bit of the It CC Cream to just makes that foundation even better. So it started with this one. I've used it with others. Most recently, the Armani Luminous Silk. It's great for this one. Again, like I said, I'm still kind of experimenting. But it's one of those two, if you have a foundation that maybe you just don't love and you can't figure out why, but you wanna love it or you wanna use it up and you have the It CC Cream, definitely try mixing this in with it. You may end up loving it and find you know, your perfect combination. Something I am wearing today with like a few other things, it was one of those, you know, when you don't love your lip color and then you just start adding a whole bunch of other things onto it, that's what I did. But I started out with the Marc Jacobs. This is the Primrose liner. I've mentioned this before. It's just a gorgeous liner. I have the little small version here. But just a really, really pretty color. Love that. I've been wearing it either just as a liner or filled in with a gloss. It's such a pretty color. It would be great going into spring. Another liner that I just mentioned in a recent haul that I can't quit using is the It Cosmetics Your Lips But Better um, waterproof lip liner stain, and this is in Buff Nude. Such a beautiful color. Really love this, so it's that one. And it looks great paired with, if, again, if you just want to line and don't want to fill in your lip color, it looks great paired with the Tartus, uh, the Tarte Tartus Lip Paint. This is in Namaste. I got this in a little kit. I don't love the formula of these um, on their own. I like to usually add a little bit of gloss. I don't think they're that flattering on me personally. I see them on other people and I think, you know, they're beautiful, but the color is really gorgeous. So there's that one. So we'll end things with a TV show that I've been watching and we probably started this, I would say in January, but I don't know if we'd been watching it long enough for me to mention it in January favorites or possibly I just forgot. But we're now into season two and I would say about probably four or five episodes in season two. So we started watching the following and it has Kevin Bacon in it and I believe there's three seasons. Well, let me just tell you the first season, especially the first half of the first season, it has major creep factor. I mean, there was a couple times I literally like yelled out, you know, like got spooked on something going on. I'm not typically one of those people that love like scary things. I hate scary movies or like gory movies. And there were some parts of this, it probably had a little bit too much of that for my liking, but I just don't watch, you know, and wait for the next scene because that's just me. But if you like Dexter, you would love the following. I just thought it has a really nice, interesting story. I like Kevin Bacon in it. He's a great actor. It's a great character for him. It just really sucks you in. It's definitely suspenseful. You guys know I like that. So that's definitely one I recommend. Um, and again, we're, you know, just starting a few episodes into season two of it. And I believe that wraps it up for February favorites. Not too many this month, but definitely some things that I've been reaching for a ton. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and we'll see you next video. Bye.